All right, let's recording. All right, guys, welcome to Graphic Novel Geeks. We can get started. Uh, talk about some of the books we've read. Uh, I read a few or some, anyways, but we can start with uh, Goblin. All right, cool. Well, man, I, I didn't really have too much planned. You know, uh, we had kind of expected to go to the Afro Comic Con, but uh, ended up kind of not going. Uh, for for me, it was because kind of spent too much money on comics and uh you know whenever i go to a con i spend money i i you know got a problem i'm in comic books anonymous um but uh you know try trying to recover oh um, i just got that i just got that, <laughs> I get that earlier. so i might as well share one of the things that i bought i was online on facebook i, I don't know why but i was on facebook and this ad pops up telling me about this really cool comic limited edition and i was like oh all okay, right cool man let me check this out and saw the price and it's kind of expensive but then an ad popped up and it's so like give them they're like hey if you give us your email and your phone number you can get 20 percent off so i was like okay so i got this cool limited hardcover 25 years of madman by mike alred um because you know, I've mentioned before, I'll say it again. I love Michael Alred. And I got number 575 of 999 copies. And this book is big and heavy and expensive, so I'm not going to show off too many pages. But it reprints all the Madman comics from his first appearance in graphic music all the way through to the end, well, to issue 12 of the Image series um so yeah so i got that and uh really happy can't wait to read it and uh so that's why i'm not at afro comic con today <laughs> yeah you know i just uh really love michael alred just his uh his use you know like most of his characters are outlined in these nice thick lines and then his, uh, you know, his detailing and like all of his stuff's almost always colored by his wife, uh, Laura Alred. Oh. And, you know, the, the colors too, just the palette is really, you know, there's not a lot of like uh, subtle colors. They're really bold, vibrant colors. Um, and, and it has a whole like cartoony feel to it. Um, but I, I just love it. I, I think, you know, that he's amazing. That's my yeah. game right there, man. <laughs> it looks cool for sure, yeah. Yeah, so I wish, you know, if it was uh, not so heavy, I'd show off a few more pages, but I'm I'm kind of scared of, of messing it up, so. <laughs> but the, that, that's a whole book right there, like a trade back, like a big collection? Yeah, it's a giant hardcover and a slip case, so it's like over 400 pages. Wow. Uh, again, it's like, um, you know, it has... I, I'm not sure if there were any Madman issues after image number 12, but uh, it shows some covers for his next series, which was the Atomics, which was a Madman uh, superhero team. And um, I have a collection that I got as a gift that has all the Atomics issues in it also. So so I think that between the two books, I've got all the Madman collected. You know, so I got Madman, Atomics, that's some yep. complete collection stuff right there, man. So pretty, pretty happy. <laughs> yeah, in 2012, he started doing the ecstatics after that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not sure exactly when he started doing X Force ecstatics, um, but I, I, I think it was about 2002 is um, when he started doing uh, X Force. Well, let's uh, see. Good old comic app. Pull up uh, X Force. Okay, so he started with number 116. Okay, yeah. Hey, look, kids, no code. <laughs> ah, no comic book code. Yeah, and that was in that was in 2001. Yeah. So um yeah, he he probably stopped, you know, Madman and then the Atomics, and then swapped over to X-Force, which became the Ecstatics, and that's what kept him busy for a little while. 
what is he doing now? Anything? Um, yeah, so he he is doing stuff now. What is he doing now? That's a great question because of course I remember. <laughs> um, you know, he he did Silver Surfer uh not too long ago. I loved right. that, that that series with Dan Slott was so great. I even though it's been like probably 10 years now, I still just uh can't think of anything else except that Silver Surfer series. It was so awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think you're right. What is he doing now? Artist. Um, fables? I really? don't believe that. That's the... Wait, the do, do, Legion of Superheroes. He had a couple of things. A couple of things in Black Hammer. Uh, X-Ray Robot, he did that in 2020. Who's that for? I don't even recognize oh, that one. He's, well, he, he's doing Ecstatics is what he's doing, of course, with Peter Milligan. They um, have a mini series called Excellent. Uh, that was five issues. And then they did a volume two for another five issues. And I think they're okay. maybe just going to keep doing it as little mini series as long as they have ideas and and it keeps selling and stuff. Yeah, that makes and sense. Right back to the ecstatics. Okay. Yeah, and that that was an excellent series, but this one was uh, focused on the excellent, which is like, you know, they the the leader broke off from the ecstatics, and um, it's more like they're more super villains, and he's like this megalomaniac that uh he's just he's trying he's trying to get power by having like if he can get like 100 million followers on faceagram then he can like have the power to like control the world or something and um, oh my god <laughs> so so it's pretty hilarious and you know certainly weird just like what you would expect from peter milligan right and um you know, is yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I love the so, fact that we got one of the members of the Ecstatics in the live action movies too. What's that? They actually did one of the characters in Deadpool too. Oh, really? Who did they do? Um, the guy that could vomit up the stuff to like melt anything. Oh, I forget who played him. I think it was um some pop star too. Huh. Yeah, was he? Now, didn't he start up in like Generation X though? And then they brought him over to X Force and then Ecstatics? No? No. Okay. I yeah, believe I that was an original Al Rig creation. Okay. I don't think that they use him in this current series. They've got Mr. Sensitive, Dead Girl, Viva Sector, Venus de Milo, well, Venus D. Milo, Zeitgeist, Gone Gal, Mirror Girl. Wait, what's Zeitgeist like Tower again? I think it was Zeitgeist. So, so Zeitgeist is the the villain, and you know, I never really read all those X Force and and Ecstatics when they came out. But in here, his power seems to be that he can um um that he can control, like he can manipulate people's thoughts. You know, so he can be like, um, no, you're not going to attack me, and then they're like, oh, I'm not going to attack you. Yeah, I'll win you Deadpool too if you haven't seen it. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, I, I can't remember if I've seen Deadpool too. That's the one with Colossus, right? Well, it's Colossus in both of them, but it's uh, the one with Juggernaut. Yeah, still can't remember if I've seen it. And Cable. First one, like the first one, but I can't remember if I've seen the second one. <laughs> yeah, no, Cable is great in it. So, I'll, yeah, I'll loan it to you. Very cool. Oh, wait, no, and I Domino too. No, I think about it. Yeah, Domino. Yeah, I think I did watch it. I think. What's that? I think I watched it. I don't remember. But I'll bring I it over tomorrow. That. I'll bring it over tomorrow night. All right. I know cool. exactly where my DVD is. I I do know that in the third one, Wolverine is wearing his yellow and blue outfit. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and I guess since I now have my PlayStation 4 hooked up again, I guess I can actually watch a DVD again, so. Yeah. <laughs> so. Is it? I mean, to me, it's not 
that ah, uh, but not that thinking about it though. In the cartoon, Wolverine is not that big, right? He's not that tall. But Hugh yeah, Jackman is I, big. Yeah. yeah. So is, is yeah. that awkward? A little. Well, I mean, uh, how I felt about it was that was the one inconsistency with the character. But other than that, I mean, he is so Wolverine, a hundred percent. Like he is a Wolverine. Yeah. A bit big. He's perfectly cast. I mean, my my goodness, Hugh Jackman, you are Wolverine. So yeah, it's a okay. He's too tall. Whatever. But, yeah, but, <laughs> I've heard yeah, an interesting cool. name bandied about for the new one, though, that I think actually it would be great. Daniel Radcliffe. I think could actually pull him off. Wolverine? Yeah. He's actually kind of short. And like, if you watch he, anything outside of the Harry Potter films, he actually does interesting work. But he's more, way more frail. He needs to take some steroids to. <laughs> he's been working out, though. It's like a lot. It's like he'd be a, he'd be a really life Wolverine, but it's like uh, he'd still be shorter than like Hugh Jackman's 6'6. Six, six. Uh, yeah, but. but uh, Wolverine is pretty funny, though. Wow, Jackman's six six. Wow, is it like really six, four six six? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Are you serious? He's that big? Yeah. yeah. No way. What? No, that has to be a lie. He's not that huge. <laughs> it's like six foot something. Because I, I know they did a lot of filming like around him so that they could like shoot higher on certain things and like shoot from underneath. Like if you go rewatch the films. They do a lot of interesting angle work just to like keep uh, his tallness hidden. Maybe he's like six three, but I don't know about six six. He might have been six four. Yeah, maybe. But it's something really tall. And it's tall. Okay. Well. Huh. Yeah, I, I know. I saw something there, like you know, Hugh Jackman deadlifting five hundred or six hundred pounds, and I was like, oh wow. But it's like, okay, well, if he's six six, then. You know, I mean, it's that's still a lot of weight, but yeah, you know, I think it was like just six feet or something. So, I mean, you know, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, most of those deadlifter guys are more wide than they are to anything. Oh, it's like, that's so wide. yeah, but what I'm getting at is just, you know, bigger, bigger is, is bigger in general, you know, I mean, yeah, six, six guy can, can, it weighs more and can therefore lift more than a guy that's five, six. It's just kind of proportion. True. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, what what you got, uh, Tatsuo? So I actually read this, the Miss Marvel uh book when she is a mutant, written nice. by uh, an actor. What a great cover! What a great yeah. cover! There's there's like actually like four or five different variants actually covers, but I like this one. She's exploding. It looks like she has the Phoenix Force in her, but she doesn't. But it's right. very explosive and i like this an homage to uh uncanny x-men 101 of course which um ah uh, yeah uh-huh yeah this is rising from the ashes yes yeah that's uh, awesome. that's yeah. awesome Big and great. i think it's written well you know because uh what's her name again imani i think uh because she's on the younger side you know she's 20 what two or something she kind of yeah. understands that that uh youthful kind of thinking so it's like it makes sense i think to me oh yeah the actress that plays her wrote that didn't she yeah 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 uh and i like it you know i think it's very um it feels very like relatable and very like genuine because you know the age and the whole like not someone way older writing it is someone that's like kind of in the same range as Miss Marvel, and someone right? who loves the character and that and that like she's a huge geek of Miss Marvel. Yeah, I, I I thought she was although I didn't like the TV show too much. I thought she was super well cast and the the way that she acted and portrayed Miss Marvel I thought was was pretty spot on. Oh yeah, uh, and well the nice thing like about she shrinks too. She gets really tiny. So I'm, I don't know if that was her ability before, but now she can shrink. Huh. And I think she's getting big and yeah. And and it's the yeah. whole thing of biggening. So is she yeah. small in? Is she small? I guess shrink. No, I guess you can shrink. Now. And shrinking? And shrinking. I guess they used the same logic when they took Ant Man and changed him to Giant Man, right? Well, the yeah. logic 
kind of, okay, so he's six feet, that's his normal size, and he can shrink down to ant size. Well, but if he can only shrink, how does he get back to normal size? So obviously he can also get bigger, right? Yeah. If he's yeah. ant, he can get back to six feet, then that means he can get bigger. And if he can get bigger, then he can go from six feet to 30 feet. So maybe they're using the same logic there. If Ms. Marvel can embiggen and then go back to normal, she can therefore yeah. go small. Normal. But yeah. where does she put the matter? That's the, the that's like you can't create matter. It's like such that, that's why this is comic books and you have to suspend your disbelief of these things. <laughs> yeah. That's what I say. And the comics is telling you just to shut up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, it you know, it, it's it's sci-fi. You've got one thing that is completely fake and you have to accept that one thing and then all the other things usually follow true logic, right? But there there's the one thing where you have to suspend your disbelief in order for the story to work. <laughs> and also it's really cool uh, because you can stretch, right? She there's an explosion if she became a ball therefore protecting people. But it's what this definitely dealt with is her being a mutant and people's reaction to it now. Because you know, yeah. now that they're going to think she's like kind of a freak and stuff like that. Um, and it also touches on her friendship with Bruno. And they do it really well here. You know, like they're definitely close friends or best friends. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that relationship's always awkward. <laughs> Wasn't he in Wakanda for a while? Bruno? What? Yeah, before the start of like when she, everyone forgot who she was. I I don't know. I haven't read recently. About I, I haven't read all the Ms. Marvels either. I've read <clears> a chunk, <throat> but ah, I keep up well, with the storylines, even though I haven't been buying it. So, you know, the the bigger question here is is what Dylan, what you and I were discussing yesterday, right? So I was like, okay, well, I guess it makes sense, like you know, with after all these years and all these people, it makes sense that there would be somebody that's both an inhuman and a mutant. And and Dylan, your response was, but inhumans like were made to like wipe out mutants. And I was like, no, that's not true. You're thinking deviants. And and Dylan, you said, well, what about the whole X Men series? And I was like, oh yeah, I didn't read that because I heard it was awful, even though it was Jeff Lemire. <laughs> so yeah. so why? you tell us a bit about that dylan <laughs> um from what i from what i remember it was like the terrigen mist bomb that black bolt set off basically the mist would kill any mutant that it came in touch with because marvel at the time did not have the movie rights to the x-men and that's saying they're killing off them in the fantastic four in the comics because we don't have the movie rights to them so why are we gonna like you know promote stuff for free it's like so the the X Men versus the humans war was set off by that. So where Cyclops goes crazy and all that, or Emma really, and they start the whole war with the Inhumans to kill them off. And where Cyclops dies for the the third time or whatever, uh huh, for a long time, <laughs> which causes Emma to just start this whole war and revenge. That's what I remember of it, and it was stupid and made up and like just utterly like editorial driven garbage. Yeah, yeah, I heard it was bad. But so I, I wonder, like, how can we reconcile that? If the Terrigen Mist was to kill the mutants, then how is Kamala a mutant when she's... Mutant and hybrid. I think because from what... I think it was explained in this issue, actually, Matt might be able to confirm that for me, that um, because she... Her mutant powers happened after the Terrigen Mist had affected her as an... Her inhuman side of her... Uh, physiology mm. maybe I, think but I don't remember them talking about that in this actually it might have been an x-men then okay brought her back i guess i won't think too hard about it and i can buy that sure okay <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and, shut up <laughs> yeah yeah don't think about it too hard these are comic books you know like there there's there's some things that are not realistic in there there uh, also in the beginning of this issue she has like a wild dream that's like with a uh, captain marvel with, with her old outfit and stuff like that and this is a crazy dream of like her stretching and like it, like with the crazy yeah, setting up captain the um, marvel, and now she's like 
tied up on her own limb. <laughs> so it's just it was a crazy dream. Cool. Uh, but it has Shadow Cat in here, and I I thought I recently heard she's like an assassin now. It's like a ninja there. Okay, yeah, yeah. Shadow Cat with the K. Is she I an see. assassin right now? Do you know? Because I thought I read that she's like doing like ninja kind of secret work. Well, she's always been kind of a ninja, like a little bit. Yeah. Well, I, I've seen some covers that kind of indicate that she looks like a, a ninja now, but you know, I, I don't follow X Men too uh, closely, so I don't really know. I'd yeah. like to, but I don't want to buy another twenty five titles a month just to like keep up with the X Men these days. Yeah, I mean, like uh, I, I was talking to my friend uh, the other night. He's a big X Men fan, and what I said to him is like, you know, I picked up a few issues. And like what I kind of found, you know, I hadn't read it since Grant Morrison um, was writing it. So like back in 2000 or something. And I kind of felt like there was a lot of 20 year history that had happened that I didn't read and that it was all kind of tied into what was going on. And so maybe that's, you know, the great soap opera for people that have been reading it for 20 years or, or maybe even 10 years. But for me... There were just a lot of a lot of talk, a lot of drama, a lot of uh, interaction that like I just didn't really know what was going on, and I wasn't really interested. I guess invested is the word. I wasn't invested in it, and I was just kind of like, "Where's the action? Where's the action?" I don't care about all this politics stuff because I haven't been reading it for twenty years, so I just couldn't really get into it. I, I felt like maybe it was more catering towards longtime fans that understand all the complex history of it which um, you know bad it just means that it wasn't really for me i think really all you needed to do is start on the uh, hawks and pox things the house of x powers of 10 that that's what we're going to say he, he said well check check out the house of x powers of x that's kind of the starting point for where they're at now well powers of 10 they interchange it with the roman numeral and the certain titles and all that it's like why um it's not X of Swords, it's Ten of Swords, because the Ten of Swords is a tarot card also, which also okay. plays a lot into the current X-Men lore. I try to follow it, but it's like, like I said, it's like $200 a month to read X-Men titles almost now. It's like ridiculous. It, it's the X-Men books, so are you sure it's not X of Swords? And also, how did the Romans say it in Latin, right? Are they like, hey, you owe me 10 bucks? Or are they like, hey, you owe me X bucks? Because... <laughs> I don't think it says X bucks. <laughs> you owe me, you owe me X bucks, bro. <laughs> I also hey. know that it was the Powers of Ten and Ten of Swords because uh, Hickman also confirmed both of those because of the uh, Ten Lives of Moira McTaggart. Uh huh. Instead of tying it into the X with that, okay. The ten. And then he said it was Ten of Swords because it's based off the tarot card, which is um. Okay. So he used them quite interchangeably. Okay, well, Hickman owes me X dollars, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hickman needs to do Fantastic Four again because it's like I think that was the last time it was like the truly great. He did good in that one. I, I remember reading that like a long time ago when he wrote it. It was pretty good. I remember. I think he wrote the one with the uh, Fantastic Four when it was Future Foundation or around. Yeah, when Spidey joined the team. Uh, when the Human Torch died, didn't really die, but you know. <laughs> Dude, he died like a boss, though, too, though. Come yeah, on. Then, then he died multiple times fighting off uh, at his death tournament in the negative zone, and he kept on getting his body rebuilt, and then he came back. Yeah, it's like... That was, uh, they made the negative zone like the cancer verse, I guess. <laughs> oh. And then he uh, had a nihilist on a, on, on a chain with a collar. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It also had the greatest... Uh, franklin richards moment of all time uh which in that whole run to be my galactus is like the best thing i've ever seen in my life what about like yo yeah future of franklin has herald is his uh galactus is future franklin's herald (laughs) nice nice yeah i I think they've referred to that in some of the comics i read yeah Uh, yeah what about his sister what's her name again val valeria uh, Named after Doom's love. Very, very conniving and clever. She talks to Dr. Doom and strikes deals with him and stuff like that. Like, what? She's also smarter than Reed. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, um, 
this is what's happening here. <laughs> well, it's like because Doom's her god uncle or something like that because of uh, how she was born because of the magical complications to Sue and all that. So Doom is technically her godfather. Yeah. 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 Which I think is like, I like when Doom is actually not the worst person in the world. It's like, I like it when he's like just arrogant and all that, but he's not like truly evil. And they've really done a lot with him in like the last, I'd say 25 years, like since Secret Wars to really like make him like a more sympathetic sort of or understandable villain. Um, maybe. <laughs> uh, he's still a jerk. Yeah. Like, but, you uh, know. D Dan Slot did a 10 issue series. And I picked up number one of that, and, and that was really cool. But I've been having trouble finding all the issues. So I've just been kind of like picking up the issues that I, as I see them. And then one day I'll have them all and can read them. But um, so I don't know how that developed his character. But um, oh, the Doom series? Yeah, it's just called Dr. Doom. Yeah. Books of Doom is really good, too. That was uh, written by someone else. But I forget who. What was that? Books of Doom is also really good, and I think that's a four issue series. Yeah. Oh, you know, there there was this book. It was it was like it was meant, meant to be a funny uh kind of book. Uh, it was like an Infinity Gauntlet, but it was like meant to be kind of humorous. I forgot the writer. I think he wrote Robo Atomic Robo or something. Oh, okay. Uh, I, know, I know the comic you're talking about. Yeah, and it, it was kind of funny. And Doom was in there with like his apron on. And he's like. Doom doesn't make sandwiches or something like that. Humor's all <laughs> humor's a very subjective thing because it's never sells well, but it's like it's stuff that I love. But it's just funny, he had he had the apron on with the green hood and he has this metal face. <laughs> like, Doom doesn't make sandwiches. And I was like, ah, oh, this is hilarious. What? <laughs> so all right. So since oh, I was gonna say one more, but okay, what you got? Uh, Captain Marvel Dark Tempest issue two. Man, I, I love this cover here. Uh, you changed the costume like again, Rambo, right? Yeah, no, that's Monica Rambo, right? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, this for her, yeah, guy named Nitro. You can like it's like explosive force power kind of thing. It's yeah. like seems to uh hate all technology. Uh, but this is a really good uh, series, you know. Uh, well, it's, it's like cosmic, well, space, and there are other planets, um, stuff like that. Here, we're on a different planet, uh, different things, different people. And then she got sent to this planet with uh, all these, these like teenagers and this one like archaeologist lady. So it's really cool. I like it. So without getting it too much about spoilers or anything, um, I think it's a great, great. Well, because I. Yeah, all three oh. all three Marvels have their own books right now, right? Mm -hmm. Kamala, Carol, oh. and uh, Spectrum. Does Spectrum have something? Well, Monica I, Rambeau. I, I, yeah. I don't. The, the Maybe. I'm not picking it up if there is something, but yeah, Captain Marvel. They're just doing a, a mini series to transition from Kelly Thompson series to whatever the next series will be. I imagine, and then with. Kamala, you know, they've got the mini series with her whole uh death and life of um because I know um next month is uh, the Marvel's movie, which I'm hoping that will go as a group. I yeah. want to watch that for sure. But uh so so hey Matt, that villain Nitro is um this classic villain from the Death of Captain Marvel um storyline. Oh. And oh. he's responsible for killing Captain Marvel in that. Uh, if I remember it correctly, so Captain Marvel died of cancer, but mm. it was his fight with with Nitro, him exploding. That's what caused the cancer. Mm, okay. Nitro is also responsible for the Civil War, as well. What's that? Marvel what's Civil it? War. Nitro is also responsible for, if I remember correctly, because he blew up that small town. Ah. The uh, was it? Because I, th I thought it was started with these. Was it the New Mutants? Where someone attacked his villain? These new warriors, just, yeah, they're new warriors, and they were just like eating. They were their normal life, and then like I yeah, know that, they, I believe was that him. You can double check, but yeah, I think it was Nitro because he blew up the whole town. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I, you're right. I, 
I read that Kingdom Come. That was a great series. <laughs> Mark Wade and Alex Ross, right? <laughs> and God just got some play in the comics just recently, so. Yeah, but I didn't recommend this one. It's definitely a good, good series, you know. I got the first and second one. And I love yeah. that cover. Uh, I love the series. I, I, he's a writer. You, uh, I just read issue two a little while ago. And I was thinking, I'm like, man, you know, Anne Nascenti is really a really good writer. And yeah. like remembering back when I first started collecting comics, um, she was writing Daredevil. And I believe oh, God, yes. so it was her and John Romita Jr. doing the art. And man, I just fell in love with Daredevil at the time. It's like she's right now, you know, she's writing this great um, Captain Marvel where she's, you know, I mean, she. she Saved that boat. There was all this technical nautical stuff that I, I'm guessing was real. I wouldn't know the difference. And they're all in outer space with these kids yep. and great mm -hmm. stuff. Also at the same time, when she was writing Daredevil, it was like you know this hard, gritty Frank Miller esque kind of you know the the type of Daredevil that Frank Miller created, where he's you know similar to Batman. And he takes no guff, but he still is this sensitive guy that's trying to help people and stuff. And it's just like. Yeah, Anna Sydney's a great writer, you know, and she's been writing yeah. since back, like the early 80s or whatever, along with Louise Simonson. So she's like really one of the, you know, unappreciated pioneers of, of women in comics, I think. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I highly recommend that Captain Marvel Dark Tempest oh, it's series. It's great. It's great. Like, I, I love it. You know, I, I love a portal idea and stuff like that. And transport another, transport, transport another planet. It's really interesting. God, I love that Daredevil run that she did. Yeah, with uh, a lot of stuff against Blackheart is what I remember Mephisto done. Inferno. It happened during Inferno a lot. And I remember him fighting Ultron, too. Oh, no kidding? Yeah, I she don't... also introduced Typhoid Mary. She introduced... Um... Uh, Typhoid Mary is a great character. Yeah, she's also a mutant. Oh, huh. and are, is she still married to Kingpin? Yeah. He's part of the, the Hellfire Club now. He's part of the Hellfire Club now? Yeah, he's helping Emma during this whole um, fall of X. Wow, okay. Uh, okay, Eric didn't tell me about that. <laughs> yeah, he's the... Um, I think he's the White King now. Okay. Was there... Who was the White King? Because Sebastian Shaw was the Black King. I don't think they ever showed it. Okay. I well, think Kitty is still the Red King Queen. The Red Queen? Wait, who? Who is? Kitty Pride. What? Okay, She's well, the Red Queen. It happened during the Hickman era. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that's all happened in the last 20 years. The, yeah, was, during the Marauder series. Still red. <laughs> so because she's like introduced her as a power play against Sebastian, like taking over everything since like all the heroes and villains were basically on one island so um, uh, sorry uh, about that guys it's not my fault uh, Goblin, you, should, uh, you should check your mic Keith. i think it was like cutting out sometimes yeah no there's a okay let me go to a different room i think maybe i don't have a good internet connection or something i don't know i mean it's not lagging it's more like you mouth or move and I won't hear anything and then one one then I'll speak it back in like in a second. Yeah, it's it's not a mic thing. It's either internet or my computer. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Oh god, that was annoying. Someone's car alarm is going off right outside my window. So Ugh. Yeah. Right, so well, uh, well, what you got, Dylan? So mine's an older book, which I've been rereading again because uh I'm probably going to lend it to you after I'm done with it, too, because I think you'll love it the most. But I've been reading The Nail and Another Nail, like, reread it twice so far. The Nail and Another Nail? Yeah, it's an Elseworlds story from back in the day where Superman isn't found by the Kents because they get a nail in their car and, like, how everything changes because of that, which um, I guess I could go into slight spoilers into it or spoil it a little bit for a 35-year-old book that and all that, but it's... um. Basically, everything's going to hell, and Jimmy is the main bad guy of it. Uh, that's all I'll go into for like the whole thing. But it's like 
Jimmy Olsen's a bad guy. Jimmy Olsen is like one of my all-time favorite characters. So it's yeah, like it's cool. It's a bad guy though. Hmm. It's just in this story. Like if you read the Jimmy Olsen series from a couple of years ago, Chef's Kiss of like perfect perfect books. But um I think I read a little bit of that. Yeah, but uh there's a... Uh, like the kind of stuff like every Silver Age DC hero that you would ever think of is in here. Every Silver Age DC hero. Hmm. Yeah. Like the new gods, Barda becoming a um, Green Lantern is part of the second book, with Scott is also part of the ring. Uh, Halo is in here, which is how I rediscovered her name again when we were talking about your figure the other day. Alongside like a uh, Major Force is one of the big, big victors. Evil Star, if you remember that guy, Despero. Like every weird sort of Silver Age person you could think of and their designs is in here because that's what Alan Davis wanted to draw. Like here's the um, back cover. Let's see a little bit better. And like, a dead man. Okay. Power girl. The Metal Men. Oh, that's Black Spectrum Orchid, Black. of all people. Nice, nice. Black Orchid's great. And then you got like Firestorm. Classic Aquaman. So, and Superman is found by the end of the first volume. So it's like the second volume is more about the second volume is like how did South and Comic Pop put it? That I think was like the best way. It's a crisis event that happened on a different alternate Earth that never got to Earth Prime. That's like how big the story is. Well, it's, it's an off color joke for you, Dylan. <laughs> what's that? Maybe force the fight I'd like to see. Him fighting G.I. Joe agent Refrigerator Perry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Too soon, man. It's like, I, I always hated what Major Force did to Kyle. Yeah. Because that's like. Yeah, I think, it, I think El Simone is going to send me some hate mail through Facebook for that joke. <laughs> <laughs> I love Gail. It's like her Secret Six is still the best series. Like, it, it really humanized Bane as a character, I think. And Catman, actually. Catman. <clears throat> Wait, oh, was God, wasn't Doctor Psycho in that too? Now that I think about it, huh? He was Doctor um, Psycho wasn't that? Oh, good lord! I got to read Secret Six again. That's such a great book. Yeah, well, there was like three volumes of Secret Six. There was the first mini series and then two regular series. Yeah, I so think the two regular series were better than the mini series because it's like that was more set up. I think, but it's like, yeah, it's like I really need to go get those again. And then I did read a second book, but I'm not quite finished with it, so I don't, but I'll just mention it because he's loaned me Modoc, which is written by um, uh, Patton Oswalt and uh, I forget, Bloom, who did the uh, minor threats and the upcoming, or the alternate, which is out now, which is like supposedly like one of the best like Astro City esque series that's come out in years, like the stuff they're doing over at Dark Horse. So I'm kind of excited to get those going in but it's just the same writing team like Patton Oswalt and Jonathan Bloom I think is the writer's name like they've been writing together for a while now right on yeah I, Paul I, Oswalt, Patton Oswalt did some oh no that's a different guy I'm trying to think what else Patton Oswalt wrote he, I think he's done other comics on his yeah, own as well I heard that he's writing comics now well I mean it's like he goes all the way back to like the old um Image Days writing backup features for like Criminal and all that and for Brewbreaker stuff and you'd see him on the uh, huh. Bendis forums back in the day all the time. I'm not familiar with either of those guys so when I get that MODOK back that'll be my, my first time reading their stuff I think. Patton Oswalt's mortally known as a stand-up co comedian. Actor. Huh. Yeah, that, I like Actor too. He was on King of Queens for the whole time. Yeah well, I did not. Stuff too. Mean. <laughs> And he watched Modoc in the uh, cartoon, the Modoc cartoon. Yeah, I'll have to check those out. I haven't seen those. Check out his stand-up comedy. He's so good. He's funny. Uh, yeah. He's really funny. Yeah, He's, uh, um, oh, sorry. He did the big Star Wars Avengers filibuster episode of um, Park and Rec, too, which is also, like, I think was his first real viral thing that I remember him mm. doing, the uncut version of that. Okay, so he was on Park, uh, Parks and Rec? One episode, but he was more on King and Queens and okay. all that, but it's like, his stand-up comedy is like the one to go see. It's um, 
I'd suggest I'll send I'll send you two suggestions over text a little bit later. I got to look them up again. Watch it. <laughs> They're funny. He's actually really funny. Stuff like that. It's like because he doesn't talk about nerd stuff and it's like his stand up and all that. It's like more human, but it's like he's really good. It's like I just know know him from like the old forum posts and all that back in the day. The uh, Bendis forums and uh, like those criminal uh, essays they did in the back issues of or back um, backs of each issue of that because it had like Brian Posehn wrote a couple of things like that for them and all that talking about old pulp and hard boiled uh, movies and film and books. Right on. The, what was that like 98 i think right no that was like 2000s so that would have been 2004 i think so all right but that's about yeah that's all i read this week. i mean i've ordered some stuff the um i gotta order that metro city uh or the uh, astro city metro books that are out now too the 25 dollar 400 pagers like they did for all of the old astro city stuff yeah awesome that, that was good stuff yeah i need to find that one thing one single issue that came out though that did the teen titans sort of parody which is like i can't remember the name of it but uh i'm thinking case and cow might have it if i actually get over to oakland in the next couple of weeks okay right on <laughs> so but um you mean oh you had one other book you wanted to talk about too didn't you um, yeah, I mean, I was going to show off. I got in first issue number four, the first and well, until Tom King came around, probably only appearance of Lady Cop. Yes, he completes up my first issue special run and it completes it because, well, you know, I had zero interest in a character called Lady Cop because yeah, what I mean it, that I'm against women cops i mean i'm all for women being cops it's but just it's the way lady, it's just cop. a cop she's not a lady cop she's a cop yeah yeah but you know the current series that tom king is writing danger street i mean the star of the book is lady cop and of course they're always saying don't call me lady cop and the uh the the danger street kids or whatever they're the thing all, that's of danger street yeah, they're they're the dingbats are always like, okay, lady cop. <laughs> and she's such a great character. So it's like, yeah, I had to get this. I have not read it yet. I do not have high hopes for it. I, I expect it to be, you know, pretty unbearable. Um, but there it is, you know, super excited to get it because Lady Tom King has done such amazing things with with Lady Cop. Yeah. That, wow. And Warlord, too. Warlord's like the other star of that series for me, I think. Really? I feel like he's not really in there very much. I feel like he's... It's I have like, a feeling they're going to set him up to be the big hero at the end. I think that's what they're doing. What's that? I think he's going to be the big hero of the end. Yeah. Since it's obviously out of continuity, since like the... Uh, since the High Father and Darkseid are working together in this series and all that, it's like, obviously that's like... It's out of continuity, so I think he's going to do the sacrifice play. Okay, all right. Yeah, I mean, for for me, besides Lady Cop, the the Dingbats seem to be the other characters really holding the book together. I mean, Star Star Warlord, they they just and and Manhunter, all that just seem kind of like little side characters, you know. Green the Creeper got a great moment in the last issue or two issues ago, where uh, he's out to dinner with Lady Cop and she just plays him like a fool. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, that's kind of who he is. He's like not the greatest character. I mean, I love him for it, but, <laughs> you know, it's like there's not much to him. He's like a weird sort of heroic joker. Yeah. Yeah, he's never been written properly, in my opinion. I mean, I, I love Ditko. Um, but uh, so, you know, cool, cool art, but never really well written by whoever the writers were. That's what I like about Kirby's like take on the, into DC was like all of his characters were kind of interesting and just sort of like, I mean, it was very Shakespearean and very overwrought, but it's like, I loved all that stuff. Like the demon was really great. That weird two issue Sandman story he did that like Neil Gaiman used in like the Sandman run, the superhero one. Yeah, he did six issue. Was it six? Yeah. 
Yeah, it was one of the uh, first comics I had as a kid was one of those uh, Sandman issues, num number five, I think they were. So the cover has, well, shoot, I can pull up the cover instead of explaining it, you know, pictures worth a thousand words. Um, Sandman. Okay, so it was number six, the last issue, one of the first comics I had as a kid. And so, you know, they've got this big... Uh, submarine type thing with these teeth and eyes and these dudes are are pulling into sandman in water and he looks dead and they're saying we have him dr spider the sandman is dead <laughs> uh so some of the characters were uh glob and brute and so you can see their their faces up there in the corner yeah. And like this issue, it starts off, there's like this kid and he's in bed and Glob and Brute sneak into his room and they unleash a bag of creepy crawlies. There's like all these like spiders and centipedes, yeah. and just disgusting things that then like hop into his bed. And then so, cause they're, they're causing nightmares. Um, and I, I guess they're kind of part of Sandman's crew. I, I don't quite remember, but you know, so they're, they're the nightmare part. And yeah. um, man, that just terrified me as a kid, man. <laughs> yeah, Glove and Brute did make a reappearance in the Sandman um, by Gaiman and all that. And like, I think he they get unmade by the end of that story. Yeah, yeah. vaguely remember, but I do remember them being in there. That that meant a lot to me. I was like, no way, because those were, like I said, that was like one of the very first comics I read. And I, I think it so it came out in seventy. 476 um yeah. well you know i didn't get it when it came out uh i don't know how i ended up across it but probably like 79 or, or something is is when i was looking at it <laughs> yeah i think the um kirby series that i read most from dc like in the as a kid i ended up with like most of commandy the last the last boy like from like six for a dollar grab bags where i ended up with like, a lot of master of kung fu and uh the old commandy series and 2001 issues nice well, those those are two great series yeah 2001 was so so it was like eh. we brought in machine man but that was about the best part of it yeah well i, I meant commandy and master of kung fu are great series yeah. especially that startling stuff yeah and there... like, i think um power man and iron fist i think i ended up with a lot of issues from too which was like where i love fell in love with those two characters as a kid cool God, are there are two different Sandman stories characters? Because I thought isn't there one that has like kind of more like there's three. So there's the Golden Age one. <laughs> Wesley Dodds. Wesley Dodds. He usually has uh you know a big brimmed cap with a cloak and a gas mask. And I he's got four Sandmans. Is that that's true, right? Yeah. And... The one with death the, the, in it. Yeah, that's the third. No, um... wait first second yeah and then there, the third this one the kirby superhero one whose name is forgettable yeah um the second is Jer is garrett sanford and then there's the classic neil gaiman one morphe i'm more aware of yeah his and son. then there's sandy who huh? became the uh, justice society's sandman in the uh jeff johns run okay so five yeah i've wow yeah interesting <laughs> but it gets two, even more complicated if you go into like how many starman there are starman there's been two two of them are legacies so there's there's really three right i mean daniel's just a legacy of morpheus that's you know it, it's one sandman really yeah. and the same and sandy was uh originally the sidekick i think of wesley dodds at one point uh yeah correctly. Because Wesley Dodds started out in the like pulp style outfit with you know yeah. the cloak and hat, but then when superheroes became popular, they popped him into a superhero looking outfit that nobody particularly liked, and they gave him a sidekick um, because that was the trend at the time. Yeah. yeah, I heard they might be reprinting those old Sandman mystery theaters and trades though because of uh, his recent appearance in Night Terrors. Ah, okay. Wesley Dodds. Yeah, I. I'm wasn't a big fan of mystery theater oh i i liked it but it's like i like pulp and noir detective stories so it's like it was always up my alley yeah i i read it for a year or so but yeah him and dion belmont also made appearances in um madame xanadu 
Him and who? Madam Xanadu. Madam Xanadu. The Vertigo run. Or at least Diane Belmont did. Diane Bell? That's um the wife of uh, Wesley Dodds. Oh, okay. She did have a name. Or it's Dion <laughs> Belmont. I think I forget how they pronounced it. But okay. yeah, like they they made an appearance in that Xanadu series. I think in the third volume or second volume. I think it might have been the second volume. All right, cool. Yeah, I don't remember that too much, but I remember the Xanadu series. I like that series quite a bit. Yeah, it was a great series. Yeah, I need to pick up more of those, but they're out of print, so it's like finding the uh, trades of that is hard. Uh, yeah, they they establish her uh, history and like Arthurian legend, and like yeah. she has fairy blood or something like that. It's good stuff. I always loved the character since the seventies, like when they had that old like the remember that one page ad they had of her was her with the tarot card just sitting there i uh, forget who did the art on that one Kaluta. it was Kaluta. okay yeah i've i've got a couple of copies of that God, yes i'm looking for that one God, that's yeah. such a great cover and um yeah i i i i got that signed by Kaluta. i think that this issue even had like a, a poster in the middle or something and i think that's what i had Kaluta sign i was like sign out on the poster dude <laughs> yeah yeah that was her first appearance wasn't it no i i don't i don't think so um fabulous first issue featuring a 25 page steve inglehart marshall rogers blockbuster plus a brand new brian boland science gen something shocker yeah i no. she was uh oh she was in doorway to nightmares uh which was like oh. six that's where she got her first appearance uh so this okay. was her single uh first solo title but it was just a one shot and never meant to be more so yeah yeah and then she kind of disappeared for a long time after that yep. nobody you know knew what to do with her uh they popped her yeah i don't know when she appeared next i think vertigo basically or she might have been a word of the gods at one point too. Yeah. I, I think know. some of the magic characters were there, but yeah. All right. Well, you have anything else you want to share, uh, Tetsu? Uh for now it's just those two things I showed. Um uh, I gotta read the other ones I bought, but I'll get to that. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, I, I was I mean, we're a bit uh, tight on time. I think I was gonna talk about the new uh X-Men Days of Future Past Doomsday series. Um, I, I was talking to my friend Eric about it. You know, he's like, "Hey, man, have you been reading X Men?" And I was like, "Nah," because of that whole, you know, just long history thing. But I did. Uh, I was like, "Well, I did check out Days of Future Past number one, and man, I was just blown away." So I was like, "Sign me up for that series." Uh, just you know, the the X Men Days of Future Past. It, it's based on this classic uh, Claremont story, um, which was. Gosh, uh, X Men 143. 1982, right? What's that? It was 82 or 81. Yeah, is uh, it looks like it's 81, 1981 is issues 141 and 142. And what it is is it flash, flash fast forwards into the future where what happened is the uh, Magneto ends up executing the president. Um, yeah. because so so the president dies and then that gives rise to this guy that was always had this anti-mutant agenda okay. and or like we need to stop the mutants and so then the sentinels um get distracted and um go up make a whole ton of them and they hunt down the mutants they outlaw mutants mutants are illegal and uh, also so kill up the um regular hero population right what's that they also take out the regular hu superhero population too, if I remember correctly in that story. Yeah, I, think I, you see us. I don't remember. It's been a long time since I read it. They didn't really, they, they kind of act like this is just a world with mutants only and that the others, uh, I, I don't really recall them talking about other superheroes. Yeah, because yeah. I think if you look at the graveyard scene in there, Steve Rogers' grave is there when Phoenix is like walking wow. through it. Or Rachel right. is. Hmm um yeah let's see gene gray yeah they're not showing that in this 
seen. It's been a long time since I read the original, but anyways, so I like this X-Men comic. Pretty cool. Days of Future Past. It just really reminded me of, of the old series. Um, and, you know, I've, as I've been rereading those old Claremont X-Men, I was kind of like, wow, the, these are still really good. These are the comics that I was collecting that made me want to read comics. I mean, yeah, it's like, he was the first writer, I think, that I like really followed as, or I, the first book I followed for writing only. Yeah. Although he had so many plot lines that he like never resolved in that, which is kind of sad because it's like, I think there's still at least 20 I can think of like that are still hanging around from his uncanny X-Men days. Or they might have gotten answered in other books, but yeah. Because you know why he quit writing X-Men, right? Yeah. Money. <laughs> and... No. Because Jim Lee was getting all the attention and he it's like he didn't want to write stuff that he couldn't like really fill up with the words and all that because Jim Lee was doing all these splash pages and that was the style of that time. Yeah. When art took over more than writing. Yeah. Hmm. So, but it's neither here nor there. Yeah. All right. Well, that that's what I got. So. Yeah. yeah. I got I some trades on order, but that's uh, they're not here yet. So. I kind of gotta get going. So, um, but we still cover some good comic books today. I think. Yeah. I think yeah. So too. It's good talking with you guys, and uh, we'll chat again Ooh. in weeks, huh? Yeah, two weeks. So that would be the what day is that? Uh, 29th. 29th. Okay, no. yeah, yeah we'll, start, we'll talk about the 29th. Sorry, it would be, uh, I think, the first. Never mind, the first. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, if Hopefully you know, we'll books by then. Uh. Um, those those other books I told you about the creators I met like that um uh, the the kung fu book with the Sifu Vegeta I'll, I'll reach out to him and then there was also the Hawaiian one I got to talk to but I'll reach out to them see if they want to do an interview and stuff about okay. that not live hmm? we should what? talk about private not live on the recording yes. well <laughs> I don't. <laughs> All right, yeah. Um, All right, gentlemen. We will All see right. you guys later. And later. Yeah.